What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be learning about the visual debugger in Xcode, what it is, how to use it, and frankly, why is it relevant to you? So here's a quick documentation page to give you a glimpse of what we're talking about. So it's this concept of basically visually seeing your app in a debug environment and changing the rotation to even see like, uh, you know, view hierarchy and how to actually leverage this to benefit you when you do come across any weird UI problems. So if that sounds good, make sure you start by destroying the like button down below. If not for the video, definitely for a WW 2021 WWDC, going through all those contents and videos to bring you guys all the latest. Subscribe to the channel if you're into iOS and want to stick around. That all said, let's get into the video. All right, so I uh, actually opened up a project here, one of my own personal apps. It is a weather app that I have on the App Store, and I'm gonna be demoing this visual debugger with this app. So before I run it through Xcode, just to take a quick look at this uh, here. So, you know, it's a pretty, pretty bare bones weather app of what you would expect. You've got the hourly, the daily, you guys can go check it out. It's called Forecasts, but before we run it, I'm gonna go ahead and add a location here. So we can hit this little plus. I'm gonna search for a new location. Maybe I'll go ahead and add a London. We'll go ahead and click Save. And now we're gonna go ahead and run this through Xcode. So I actually compiled this right before this video. So instead of hitting run again and making all of you wait, pro tip, you can hit product up here and you can hit perform action, run without building. And what this will do is this will run the app from the latest built uh, app that is cached on your computer. So here we have the app running. We have all the logs down here in the console, not really relevant. So let's talk about the visual debugger. So first and foremost, how the heck do you access it? So the, the way you need to access it is first run the app through Xcode. Now down here in your console, let me expand this a little bit. What you need to go ahead and do, if you take a look at all these button options right here, uh, four over from this pause button from the left here, there is this option and if you hover over it, it says uh, debug view. And you can go ahead and click on it and sometimes you have to click on it a few times and you get brought into this cool looking view. So let me go down and collapse this bottom so we can get um, a larger picture here. So this basically looks like our app and similar to breakpoints, when you go into the visual debugger, it actually pauses your app so you can't interact with it. Now, what can you do in here? So the first thing that might catch your eye on the left-hand side is that your uh, normal navigation of your project hierarchy has changed to whatever this monstrosity is. So. Before we look at that, the other thing I want to draw your eye to is at the bottom where you had clicked that button, there's now this little slider. So let's just slide this and see what happens. So obviously you can tell what's happening there. And this is, I think, the coolest part of the visual debugger, aside from the fact that it just looks really awesome. It's really useful when you start building out applications with more complex view hierarchies where you can see things um, on top of one another. So for example, right, and you can click and drag and move this around. And if you have a trackpad or even like, you know, a desktop mouse, you can scroll in and out uh, to zoom in and out as you would expect. So let's take a look at this. So clearly we have um, a bunch of these uh, images at the top here, which serve as our hourly view. And on the right below them, we have labels. You can see as I hover over them, it actually draws a little outline around it. And you can see that all this stuff is sitting on top of this background here, which is actually a blur. And there's a background behind that. And that's this guy here. And then that whole thing is nested in these three other squares, um, followed at the very back here by our window. So. It's cool that we can see it, but how do we actually debug this? How do I know, you know, what each element is? And the easiest answer is by looking on the right hand side or rather the left hand side. So let me collapse this a little bit to make it a little easier to see. And if you look in the left hand side, we have this hierarchy of stuff. So let's go through it. So this hierarchy actually is exactly your view hierarchy as it's running in your simulator or device. So your application starts off with a UI window, which nests everything. And then the first thing inside of it is a transition view, which is all great. But the important thing we want to start off with is our tab bar controller. And if I just go ahead and like collapse basically everything inside this tab bar controller, you'll see that we just have this UI transition thing. So let's open this up. 
and let's go ahead and collapse all of these so we can see that inside the tab bar controller we have a UI tab bar and if you actually look at the right hand side it's a little tough to see but when I selected UI tab bar it highlighted it on the actual visual side over here so if we open it we can see our tab bar items you guys basically get the point but this brings up the question of why is this useful when should you use it so I've actually used this uh, hundreds and hundreds of times at this point, um, writing iOS, and this is most effective when you have some sort of really weird visual thing going on with your view hierarchy, maybe some view isn't showing up, maybe it's not on screen, maybe the view uh, you know, is a sub view, but the frame and layout isn't set up correctly. So it's really useful to see just where things are relationed, uh, relationally to other things. The other thing that's pretty cool to see is the nested controllers. So um, let's go ahead and give an example here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the little play button down here to go ahead and continue running our app. And you guys recall we had added uh, London as a location. So this entire uh, controller is actually in a page view controller. So we can actually go ahead and swipe between these. So let's go ahead and uh, hit that visual debugger again after we go ahead and swipe on over and let's see what we end up getting. So it's pretty interesting to see how iOS is managing all this stuff. So we can clearly see that we have London selected, but let's go down and see the stack here. So we have this now view controller and we can also see that it is embedded inside of a navigation controller. And if we continue going all the way up, let's go ahead and collapse this here. We can actually see that both of, uh, rather this one, this UI view which wraps it, is inside of a page view controller. And this is the importance of the visual debugger because unless you're very intimately familiar with how these controllers are nested in the view hierarchy, it's really tough to mentally get your mind around how this stuff fits together. So it looks like in this page view controller we have two views. And this first one here is a navigation which wraps uh, you know, a view controller. And this other uh, navigation here also internally wraps a navigation controller. So why do we have two? And you know the simple answer is because we first you know we're on Cupertino to see Cupertino's weather, and this time we are on uh, London. So we do have both of those view controllers in our view hierarchy, even though visually we can only see one at a time. So. Let me just uh, expand this a little more so we can actually visualize better what the heck I'm talking about. So let's see, we've got this. So this is our navigation uh, controller and bar. So I'm gonna open this guy up and this. So we have a now view controller here as well as here. So yeah, I mean, this is the crux of kind of visual debugging. Of course, it's perfect for light mode. It's perfect for dark mode, anything visual at all. Let's say you're testing a dynamic font for a larger font support, so on and so forth. The reason I wanted to show this particular view in particular uh, is because there are a lot of nested components, especially as you start to scroll down, you get to this section here. So let me throw this into dark mode. And now that we've got some like collection views and stuff here, let's go ahead and uh, hit this again. And you guys will get a good glimpse of what this looks like rendered out, which is all great. But more importantly, I can go ahead and uh, expand basically the Z axis here and see how it all fits together. So not only do we have these cells, but we've got image views in them. And if I select it and if I double click it, actually what it will do uh, is it'll highlight it on the left and I can't recall at the moment what the shortcut is but there is a shortcut to highlight it directly so here we go you can right click and reveal and debug navigator and boom it'll jump to it directly like that there is a keyboard shortcut for that as well but you know if you're trying to find something to save yourself on some time um, it's pretty useful. The other thing that you can like learn from this is how Apple builds some of their own components. So what's cool is we have uh, a map indicator up above here, if you guys can see this red circle, but it looks like it's a separate view, which makes sense. So we can reveal in debug uh, navigator, and we can see that this is a MK Bezier path view. So uh, of course, this is like at this point internal to how Apple builds MapKit. Uh, but anyways, I digress. You can use this to go pretty deep into your visual hierarchy. So 
that is all I've got for you guys today. Pretty short video, but really important uh, thing to know, especially as you start working on larger applications with more views, especially professionally. So if you enjoyed the video and haven't done so already, drop a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're into iOS and want to stick around. This app is called Forecasts uh, that I built quite a while ago. Check it out if you uh, you know want a new weather app or just see some of the stuff that I've worked on. Maybe I'll link it down below. And the last thing I'll mention is I'm uh, combing through WWDC 2021 content, a lot of new stuff to share and come. I've got an enormous list uh, going of just like video topics. So stay tuned for all of that. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.